He was a dream, the future, or so I thought. But my love was cursed right from the start. Sounds a bit confusing, right? Let me explain. But first, I should probably introduce myself. I'm Carolyn. I was a dreamer. I dreamed of a good, warm, stable, successful life. I wanted a good job, and I wanted to travel around the world a bit with Helen. She was my best friend. We virtually shared the same dreams and hobbies and interests and lifestyles. We've been friends since we were kids. People often thought that we were sisters. I did too, in fact. She even got jealous if anyone tried to get close to me. Every day, Helen and I worked a little more towards our dreams. Once, when Helen and I were traveling with some of our friends, we had a problem with a hostess on the plane. A gentleman intervened and cleverly solved our problems. His name was Danny. I liked him a lot. I thought about him often, but whenever I talked to Helen about him, she told me that he was not as amazing as I seemed to think he was. Coincidentally, I met him again at a party of a mutual friend. We talked together till daylight. I told Helen about our encounter, and she expressed her wishes that my love story would have a happy ending. I similarly told her that I hoped she would find the love of her life some day too. Everything would be okay. We figured. Then, one day, I received a letter in our mailbox. It was in weird handwriting, as if the writer had written it with a trembling hand. I opened it curiously. It said that my love for Danny would become a curse if I didn't give him up and get him out of my life. What nonsense! I thought. Whose idea of a silly joke was this? I immediately called Danny and Helen to tell them about the letter. Danny laughed, but Helen was worried and suggested that I should be careful from now on. That same day, Danny had a horrible car accident, but fortunately he wasn't hurt. A detective investigating the case determined that his car brakes had been tampered with. In another incident, a car almost hit me, but it swerved away at the last minute. When I mentioned this incident to Danny, he tried to calm me down and told me to just forget about it. He gave me a beautiful bracelet as a present and proposed. We got engaged, and I couldn't have been happier. I wanted to show the bracelet to Helen, but somehow I seemed to have lost it. I couldn't find it anywhere. Anyway, when I told Helen about his proposal, she was thrilled for me. I spent days shopping for just the right wedding dress. I was so busy with preparations that I forgot all about the ominous letter. I went to the wedding hall early to make sure that everything was ready and prepared. Helen was helping me, and Danny kept calling me to make sure I was all right. Suddenly, the lights went out. I called out to Helen, worried that she might have tripped and fallen when the lights were out. When the lights came back on, Helen had fainted, and my dress had disappeared. I screamed to the ceiling, "What do you want from me? Leave me alone!" Suddenly, Danny appeared out of nowhere and asked me what had happened. I told him then and there that we must break off our engagement, otherwise the curse the letter mentioned might injure someone or cause someone to die. Then Helen came too and tried to calm me down. She told me to go to the car and that she would get our stuff and follow me. I loved Danny and wanted to marry him, but now I was seriously worried that this curse threat might actually be real. Helen came back carrying a bag and a large suitcase and told Danny not to worry that she would drive me home and then call him to tell him that we had arrived safely. I was still crying and Helen was trying to calm me down. When we arrived home. I noticed something strange. Helen was carrying a bag that was partially open, and I glimpsed a piece of clothing stuffed into it. It looked exactly like my dress. I opened the bag and found that it was my dress. I confronted Helen and demanded to know how my missing dress ended up in her bag. I clearly caught her red-handed, and she was unable to answer coherently. I realized at that moment that the source of the so-called curse was Helen. Helen. I said, "How dare you do this to me? I thought we were like sisters to each other." She replied icily, with a glare that I saw for the first time. She said that she fell in love with Danny just as I did, but he chose me instead of her, and that she hated me for it. She said she won him over and got him to love her instead. Then they both tried to scare me into calling off the wedding so that she and Danny could be together. There are no words to describe how I felt at the time. I replied in a similar tone. I told her that I don't ever want to see her again, or Danny. Neither of them mattered anymore. 
I never did see Helen or Danny after that day. I'm on a Caribbean island now, sipping on a cocktail. I read in the paper that Danny and Helen had announced their engagement. I'm thinking about what wedding present I should give them, as a surprise. It all happened on my last holiday. It was a terrible experience. It was the worst holiday I have ever had. Me and my friend Renee, we decided to go to New Zealand. We were saving money for a very long time to go on this trip. It was our dream to go to the land of the Lord of the Rings. We had made reservations for flight at the end of July. And from that moment on, everything went wrong. It turned out that the flight was reserved for only one person. Simply because a woman at the travel agency didn't understand us very well. I managed to reserve a flight, but a different one, so we couldn't go together. But I thought that it was not a big deal. My friend flew a few hours after me, I was going first. When I arrived at the airport, I was very happy because that meant that my holiday has just started and that nothing else could happen. And I was mistaken. When the hour of my flight was coming, I queued up to the custom clearance. My passport was right, and the next thing I had to do was to go through the metal detector. When I was passing through, it started to beep. I was so scared. I was taken aside immediately, and I felt like a thief. It was terrible. The custom officer had taken me to another room and she told me to undress. I tried to explain that I had a belly ring and maybe it was the cause of the beeping but she didn't want to listen. I had to undress. They took my clothes somewhere else and I was standing alone in the middle of the room. I was shocked and stressed. The woman came back after about 5 minutes which seemed to be ages for me. She gave me back my clothes but I was not allowed to put them on. She checked me one more time with a small metal detector which was obviously beeping in front of my belly ring. Of course, the custom officials went through all of my things but they didn't find anything. I was late for my flight so I had to wait for another one. My friend was supposed to meet me at the airport and it was me who should be waiting for her. She was terrified that I was not there but fortunately she decided to wait. After that horrible flight, we met at the airport and we went to our hostel. It turned out that we expected something different, but it was not that bad, and we were too tired to look for something else. New Zealand is the most beautiful country I have ever seen, and we loved everything about it. The people, their customs, their food, basically everything, and the entire environment. We spent three weeks there. We had a really good time. But when the time ended, we had to fly back home. I was a little bit scared. This time I decided to remove my belly ring. We came to the airport about three hours before the departure time. At the entrance to the airport, we saw an older woman who had a large card with the word written on it with capital letters, Poland. So I came up to her and I started to speak in Polish. She smiled and we started to chat together. When we were just about to leave, she asked me if I could take a box of chocolates with me and give it to her son in Poland. He was supposed to meet me at the airport because she would phone him. And of course I agreed. And then it started again. 